What's up guys, welcome back. Uh, today, we're gonna be reviewing the Stan Onyx, but this is the hinge version of it. Uh, this release has a lot of cool features. Um, there are a couple things that I think consumers should know before purchasing, um, but I think the, the benefits outweigh any of the shortcomings. So this is the same handle that you're gonna find on the Onyx thumb button or the Onyx uh, resistance activated release if those are the ones you shoot. Um, I personally like this release mostly for the fact that I can go seamlessly between, you know, the thumb button and this release, and it doesn't change anything with my anchor point or D loop length or peep height or any of that. Um, this is the, this was a demo that they sent us. Um, this is not actually my personal release. Um, I have not been shooting this hinge, um, but I have been playing with it recently and it's got a lot of features that I like. So this is not anodized. If you were to purchase one at the store, um, you can get it in the heavy metal, which is like the brass one, which is a lot heavier. This is just the aluminum, uh, but it comes anodized in kind of that, that same green color that the, uh, the thumb button comes in. Um, it has a safety on it. So the trigger here or the, the thumb knob, when I push that, that engages the hook and keeps it from, from firing. Um, one little thing about this is if you if you rock the release too far back, it won't fire, but when you take your thumb off of the peg, it will just let go. Um, this is gonna be very hard to see on camera, but this little black piece under here, as, as I rock, as I hinge the release back, that black piece presses against the set screw from under here, which is how you set like the travel on the release. And as that presses it, that makes the, the hook there clear the sear or the sear clear the hook, however you wanna look at it, causing you know this to open. So if I push that all the way down, like if I engage the safety and then push that down, I can still open the hook. Um, I think a lot of people think that this release is misfiring on them or that something is wrong with it. But if as long as I have that safety engaged, I can draw the release in any which way without punching myself in the face. But like I said, if I get too far back, as soon as I take my thumb off, it will fire. Now it's not doing it on here because on this, yeah, see, boom. Um, on this release trainer, this thing is so fat that if I rock it far enough to where it will fire, the hook just slips off the, so let's try it right there. Take the thumb off. Yep. And it goes. So, um, there is something to consider there. It is not misfiring. In fact, I know a couple guys where that's actually how they shoot it. They set the safety, they come in, kind of rotate that hand back. And then as they, they're aiming, they just start relaxing the palm of their hand. And as the pressure comes off the safety the release will fire the way it's designed to be shot is i hit the safety i can draw wherever come into my anchor take my thumb off and then as i start rotating boom the release fires um as long as that your little hook there or your little sear is off of the moon at full draw the release will not fire when you take your thumb button off. You can also shoot this without the safety. I mean, as long as I draw with enough pressure on my, you know, my index finger there, it won't fire. And then as I start to come in, keep rotating and boom. Now, this does not have a click, which I believe they're actually now manufacturing a hook and a, um, a hook and a sear or a hook and a moon rather, uh, that has a click because some people like I said, depending on where that hand position is or where that release position is when they take off the safety, you know, it might have, I don't know, you know, a 16th of travel or it might have like a 64th of travel. So having a click will tell you like, hey, you know, it's about to go. So they are manufacturing it with that now. Um, in fact, they're coming out with a new release that's actually a thumb button with a click. That one right out of the back out of the gate kind of confuses me, but we're gonna get a couple and I'm gonna play around with them. Um, one thing I noticed is on, on my thumb release, the hook faces away from you. On this, it faces you know, towards me when I hook it on the string. It did change my tune ever so slightly. I mean, when I say slightly, I'm talking like this was just, it changes the starting position of that D loop basically, ever so slightly, um, because one hook is coming in from the bottom here, this one's coming in from the top. So this gave me about, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch tail low right out of the bow. Now, 
I didn't see any difference at 20 yards in terms of my, my point of impact. Um, but it is something to consider, you know, if you'd want to shoot them both. So that if, let's say you shoot the hinge all the time and then you go to the thumb button when it's really windy or something. Um, yeah, see that time it went really quick because I had a little more rotation in it. Um, but yeah, if you were going back and forth between the two, you'd want to shoot both inside them in. And just make sure that like, okay, you know, if I'm shooting my thumb button, I got to give it four extra clicks in elevation or whatever that is. Um, that's one of the things that I thought was kind of weird. Like, why wouldn't you make both hooked positions in the exact same spot? Uh, but it's a really smooth release. Um, again, you can make it a, this is the four finger. You can put the three finger attachment on there. You can shoot the four finger just with three fingers. Just pull your thumb off there and boom. Now you've got your three finger. Um, I like where it's set right there. As long as I start that far enough, you know, forward, it's about the exact same amount of rotation every single time. Um, so yeah, it's like I said, it's a cool release. It's, those two little features where it it will fire you know if i if i put too much tension on it here before i let my thumb off boom it just fires that can throw some people off because they think the release is misfiring on them but you just have to understand the design of it uh, but you can shoot it like that like i said you can come in you know put your pressure on it start pulling and then just start taking your thumb off and poof, it'll fire um, so you can kind of play around with the way you like to shoot this. I am not a big resistance release guy, so I have not messed with that a lot. Um, I think they're a good training tool to kind of see what a, a quote surprise shot looks like and kind of learning that the ropes of like controlling that pressure until a shot breaks. Um, but man, especially for like hunting or tournament situations, you know, if it's really, really windy, usually I'm pulling into those stops a little bit harder than usual, um, in a hunting scenario one of two things happens with resistance releases. People either uh, aren't pulling at all, like their adrenaline's kicked in and they're so nervous that they're, like, they're not as strong as usual, or they're pulling so hard that as soon as they take their thumb off the button, it releases. Um, you know, if that, if that moon is engaged too far on this, it essentially is like a resistance release. As soon as I pull my thumb off, it's gonna fire. Um, but I'm gonna shoot a few arrows with this and just kind of go over a couple things, kind of watch, let you watch it in action. Um, I think it's a cool release. I, if I could change a couple things, it'd be the hook position. And then I wish they would make it like, so this is my old true ball, uh, sweet spot pro this release. As long as that safety oops, set this down, as long as that safety is engaged on this release, I can start my rotation anywhere on here. And when I take the safety off, it's going to travel the same amount, no matter where I start from. Um, because this whole, when I engage that, essentially there's a magnet in there that now lets this travel independently. Personally, I think that's a better design. Um, any release with a safety is a really good way to start to learn how to hit a hinge or shoot a hinge. Most people are so afraid when they first start that they're gonna punch themselves in the face. They're just super, super tense. They can't let that thing roll. And you need to learn how to be relaxed, keep those fingers and palms soft while you're shooting a hinge. Um, but Anytime I'm doing a lesson and somebody wants to start shooting a hinge, this is what I start them on, just because they don't have to worry about punching themselves in the nose. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna quit blabbing here. I'm gonna set, I don't know, I'm not shooting very far here. It's like 16 yards in my backyard, but I'm gonna set the, the camera up on me, shoot a couple arrows, and uh, yeah, we'll just see, see how she does. So before I get started here, one other thing that you need to know about this release, uh, and this might just be because this is a demo that they whipped together, but this little set screw on the bottom right here, that needs to be backed out in order for that safety to engage. I've noticed that over time shooting, if that gets backed in, you won't feel any travel in that trigger. If that is the case, the safety will not engage. So you always need to make sure that that little set screw, and you can just do it by hand, but you wanna make sure that that's backed out. If I was gonna always shoot it like that, I would probably put a little bit of Loctite on there. Um, if I was gonna always use the safety like that, I'd put a little bit of Loctite on there and make sure that that screw doesn't move. So probably set my sight not at 60 okay again this is close but we're gonna play with it okay so there safety is now engaged felt good okay so now i'm gonna do one where i 
purposely rock it back and just take my thumb off the trigger and see what happens there. Sorry, my dog's scratching at the door. Okay, so here, make sure I'm on target when I do this. And we're gonna roll that till the safety's no, probably no longer engaged. Yeah, see, as soon as I took my thumb off the trigger, which you can't really see, but as soon as I relieved that tension, it fired. Now, honestly, <laughs> it's not a bad way to shoot. Um, it it kind of works. Now, let's do another normal one here. Yeah, I mean, it, it works. Um, I would say, so just in shooting this a little bit at the shop, and then obviously right now, um, probably my biggest pet peeve is that depending on where you start your hand, you might have to travel a ways until the, the moon actually engages with the hook. Then the, the set travel will kick in. Um, and then obviously, like I've said a million times in this, if I'm too far back, it's gonna be a lot less travel. If the, if the moon is already engaged a little bit, as soon as I start to pull, it's gonna go off. So it's definitely one that you wanna make sure you're on target with before you start rolling through the shot, which I mean, that's pretty much true with every release, but this one, like I said, there's no click to tell you like, hey, it's about to go. Um, so if I guess if I had one pet peeve, that would probably be it. But sweet shoot and release. Let's shoot one more. All right, we're gonna do another one where it's already engaged and I just relax my palm. So there it's engaged. Yeah, pull my thumb off and boom, it goes. So um, yeah, there you have it. Like I said, I'm not here to tell you that this is a good release or a bad release. There are definitely qualities I like, some things I wish they did differently, but if you already shoot an Onyx thumb button and you're looking for a hinge that doesn't mess with your anchor point and feels the same, this is your guy. So. Thanks for watching today. Remember, precision is a decision. Keep them in the middle. I'll see you on the range.